What's going on you guys? Uh, today we're taking a break from the Cushman build um, because my wife needs new brakes on her Ford Edge. Um, today we're just going to be doing the back brakes and so I'll show you what you need to do to complete this job on a 2011 Ford Edge. Um, I believe it goes all the way up to 13 maybe even 14 but the first thing you need to do is obviously get it up on jack stands and then you need to take off your tire. I've already done that Everybody should know how to take off a tire. If you don't know how to take off your tire, you shouldn't be doing the brakes on your car. So the first step, and the reason I'm replacing them is, you can see it, there's a lot of lines on here. So I'm gonna see if I can get these resurfaced. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and change out the brake pads while I'm at it and grease the pins. Now this bolt here, uh, people have been having trouble getting this off. It's been rusted and corroded. Luckily mine came off pretty easy. Um, Really, I mean, I, all I used was, was this little ratchet here and uh, put a small extension on and then a T30 uh, Torx bit. So I'll just shove that right on there. There. And you spin it off. Now, a lot of times this is going to want to spin on you. So what you can do... get you a sorry get you a crowbar here and stick it in there between the threads as onto the ground and that way whenever you're spinning it it's loosened now but it'll tighten up against that right there so it won't spin on you so I'll get this bolt taken off and then we'll go from there so this was a t30 um, it's actually a t40 I apologize the t30 is for your rear uh, brake noise dampener so what you do is you get your T30 and there's a little cover back here and there we go. So you just, this cover was here, you just pull it off and then you put your Torx bit inside and you just take it off and you can see it coming out right there, coming out easy. And once you get to a certain point, you should be able to just take her off all the way. Boom. So there's that Torx bit inside that I was talking about. And we're going to reuse this because there's nothing wrong with it. And now that that step's done, we'll go on to the next step, which is to remove this bolt here that the dampener came off of. Um, you're either gonna need a deep well socket, it's metric. Um, I don't have any deep well metric sockets, so what I'm gonna use is just a, a wrench. So this video, really, you don't need any special tools to do what I'm doing here. Um, the most special tool I use so far is a uh, um, is an impact driver, just to take the wheels off, just to make it quicker. So this is something you can do at home, in your shed, in your garage, in your driveway, uh, just everyday tools. So let's get those two bolts taken out. All right, so this, these two bolts are both a size 13. All right, so we moved over to the other side to show you. Um, once you break this bolt loose here on the top of the caliper, <laughs> there's a bolt right here in the middle. You gotta hold still or else it'll just spin while you're trying to undo it you can see it just spinning so I'm gonna take this out I can't do it with one hand um, and then I'll take out the bottom which I already showed you how to take off the dampener on the other side and you just like I said put a deep wall socket here or you can put a, um, a wrench and it'll do the same thing and just get that bottom bolt taken out and then we'll go from there all right so I got the top bolts off Got the bolt, bottom bolt off. This side, um, the bottom one came off a lot easier on the driver's side than the passenger side. I actually twisted off the bolt inside of the pin on the passenger side, which sucks because now I gotta get a new dampener, but um, it could be a lot worse. So here is a good dampener pin. Basically this part 
screws inside of your dampener like that. And this end piece goes inside of your pin that goes inside of your caliper. And what happened was it twisted off. So that's what I'm left with on the passenger side. But luckily it twists off and it goes inside of this pin. So you don't have to get a whole new caliper, you just have to get a new pin. So we'll go ahead and get a new pin. Um, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to order this. I don't think they have it in stock, but I should be able to still put this all back together and be drivable until I get this in the next couple days. Which once I get this in, all I have to do is take off the tire, screw that side in, and then screw the dampener on. So it'll be just fine. So let me go ahead and take you back over and we'll get these brake pads taken out and the um, and the discs. We'll get the disc taken out. All right, and after you got all those bolts taken out, these, you just slide them off. I had to use a little bit of a crowbar to kind of get it started. But then they just give them a little wiggle and they come right off. Now, the good thing, the smart thing to do is to wire these up to somewhere so that they're not hanging. But in my case, it's not hanging on the brake line. It's just kind of chilling on the, um, on the parking brake cable. So I'm not that concerned about it. So now the next step is to take these brake pads out and we're gonna have to take off this caliper bracket because we need to take off the, the discs, the rotors, whatever you want to call them. So it looks like, let's see. Yeah, we got a bolt here at the top and then one down here at the bottom. And so we'll just go ahead and get those taken off. And uh, we'll go from there. Once those come off, this whole bracket should come off and Hopefully this thing just kind of slides right out. I might have to uh, hit it a little bit with a rubber mallet to break the to break the seal, the bond between this and the hub, but it should come off pretty easy. So let me get those two bolts taken out and we'll go from there. All right, so I got the got the bracket off. Uh, it came off really easy, no problem taking out these gigantic bolts. Um, and what I did was I whacked the rotor a couple times with a hammer. Um, no, do not hit it here or on the back side. You'll mess it up. You don't want to do that. What you can do is just smack it real lightly in between these studs. And I mean, you don't even have to hit it that hard. Just a couple taps and you can see that it's loose. So then you just take it and it slides off. And it wasn't really all that rusty down under here. Um, I've seen in some vehicles it gets real rusty. This one wasn't too bad. So now we can take a look at the rotor. And you can see on this side, it's a, looks like something got stuck inside of the rotor. It's a pretty deep ring. Yeah, these pads, that inside is done. Sorry, I don't know if you can see it or not. That inside pad is done. So we'll go ahead and get these pads replaced. These come off pretty easy. Just take them off. There you go. And you gotta remove these. Remove these clips. There's four of them on each. Yeah, on each side. Get those off, your new pads should come with new clips. Yeah, this pad was done. It definitely looks like a rock or something got stuck inside of there though. All right, let's get the other side taken off and uh, I'm gonna go get these things resurfaced, hopefully. Hopefully they can just resurface them. I don't think that they're super terrible. This side is pretty smooth. This side's got that I wouldn't even say it's that deep. I mean, you can clearly see it and you can feel it with your finger, but it's not like it's halfway through the metal. 
So I'll get the other side taken off, get this resurfaced, and uh, get the new brake pads, and we'll get it all put back together. All right, we're back. So I got my uh, disc resurfaced at O'Reilly's. Ten bucks a piece, uh, ten bucks per rotor. You can't beat it, considering that they're fifty-six dollars a piece, brand new. Um, so I got that back here. One thing I forgot to mention: you are going to need one special tool for this job, and this is what I'm using. It's like a little cube and each side has um, different little bits sticking out to fit different kinds of calipers. And the one we needed is this one, this side. That's got the right angle on it. And all you need to do is set your ratchet to tighten and you just line up those little marks into these holes on the piston. And I've already tightened these in, but you just get it lined up just like that. And then you'll push on it and you'll spin it to tighten it. But I've already got it tightened all the way in. But you are going to need this special tool. Um, you can also, you can rent it. You can rent a kit from O'Reilly's. Uh, it was about 60 bucks for the kit. Or you could buy this cube and reuse it for $10. So I just bought the cube. All right, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and start putting everything together. Um, putting it together is the exact same as taking it apart, just the opposite. So I'll get started with that. The first thing I need to do is put my new brake pads inside of the holder, inside of the bracket. Let me go ahead and get that done. All right, so I got the brake pads put in there. And one thing that you need to do that's easy to do before you put this back on the vehicle is you take the boot off this little ledge here and pull your pins out and you're going to want to grease these up real well and put it all back together and you can also inspect your boot while you got it all out make sure that it's not torn or ripped or anything uh, this, these are still in real good condition so i'm just going to loop these up and put them back in there and then get this bracket installed back on the vehicle and put the caliper on and I gotta put the, actually gotta put the rotor on before I put this bracket on. So let me go do that. All right, so I got the rotor installed and then I put my little bolt back in to hold it steady while I was trying to put this bracket on. And like I said before, you put in the top bolt and the bottom bolt, tighten them up. I already greased my pins, brake pads are installed. Now all that's left to do is put this on top, slide it in, first thing. Push your pads in as close as you can to the rotor. And I've already pushed the piston back into the caliper. I may have to do it more, but you never know until you start putting it all back together. And I may need two hands to do this, so I'll come back whenever I get it back on there. All right, so the driver's side is all done. Um, I went in, and I did have to move this piston back in a little bit. I just did it a few more turns and then it all slid together. And after you do that, if you do the top bolt first and then you go and do the bottom bolt, it makes it a lot easier uh, than doing the bottom bolt and then the top bolt. But I always do the top bolt first and then it helps up line up the holes for the bottom. And then I put my dampener back on and then tighten it down with that T30 Torx and put that dust cover back on top. So that is how you replace the back brake pads and resurface your rotors on a 2011 to 2013, maybe 2014 Ford Edge. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day.